What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. Time for What the Fitness. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So this time it's a little bit different. We have a bit of a role reversal. We have Dave Asprey back on the podcast, only this time He's not the one really making the claims. I guess it's on his podcast, the Human Upgrade podcast. Definitely not for upgrading your brain, that's for sure. And he has Kate Shanahan on, who has written a book recently. And as we all know, if you wrote a book on nutrition, you have to be completely valid as an expert. <laughs> So let's see what Kate Shanahan has to say. Is there any validity to this or is this just like worried to doctors trying to stick to the cholesterol hypothesis? By the way, cholesterol hypothesis is not really a hypothesis anymore. We have mechanistic, animal, and randomized control trials in the form of Mendelian randomization studies to show that your lifetime exposure to LDL cholesterol is a linear risk factor for heart disease. The more LDL cholesterol you're exposed to over the course of a lifetime, the higher your risk of heart disease. It's making a very simple thing so much more complicated than it needs to be. It does come down to oxidation. Now, one of those markers, I think, is a reflection of oxidative stress, and that's LP little a. Yes. And I say that because I have seen that improve, strangely enough, when people get off protein powders. Because uh, like you mentioned, protein powders are not the natural form of how our body gets protein, but they, they can promote Ooh. glycation. That's a form of a chemical reaction that is related to oxidative stress. Oh, tell me what but about the But I've seen reaction, people Kate. with high LP little a who have a lot of protein powder in their diet. I've told them to swap that out for real food-based protein and their LP little a has improved. I've seen that time and again. If only we had human randomized control trials looking at protein, and we're gonna say whey protein because that is what most protein powders are, is whey protein. Whey protein consumption and blood lipids, oxidative stress, cardiovascular disease. Oh, wait, we do. Oh, and what do they say? Survey says. Whey protein has been shown in people who are metabolically unhealthy to reduce their HbA1c, to reduce their insulin, so improving overall insulin sensitivity, to reduce their triglycerides, to very modestly reduce their LDL cholesterol, to reduce total cholesterol, and in healthy subjects, it doesn't affect any of the blood lipids, except it does appear to slightly drop triglycerides. Okay, well, what about oxidative stress? There's actually some evidence that whey protein decreases oxidative stress and may improve antioxidant status. Oh, I wonder why she didn't talk about that. And they're talking about LP little a, lipoprotein A. It's a form of low density lipoprotein and it is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. It can damage the endothelium, much like apolipoprotein B, which can damage the endothelium. And so LPA is something we've got to be cautious about. And there's no studies looking at whey protein and lipoprotein A, but do we really think that whey protein improves all these other things, but it's gonna randomly make lipoprotein A worse? And her saying, well, I've just seen it time and time again. She's another one of these like pro low carb carnivore-ish people who is just trying to create this narrative that red meat is the answer for everything. I am a big fan of high quality animal protein for numerous reasons. And I think that red meat can be part of a healthy diet when it's done in moderation, and especially if it's red meat that's relatively lean and low in saturated fat. But just acting like it's the solution for everything is freaking ridiculous. And this whole, well, it's not the natural form of protein that your body gets. And she tries to make this weird segue between glycation and whey protein. How, how is it getting glycated? And how is that any different than cooking meat and it possibly getting glycated? Like, uh, what? You can tell when somebody is intellectually dishonest when they only apply logic asymmetrically, meaning they apply a specific type of logic to one scenario, but then don't hold other scenarios to that same level of scrutiny and logic. Well, whey protein, it's not natural. Well, actually, it comes from a cow. It's part of cow's milk. 
it's all you're doing is isolating it. You're not like synthetically creating it in a lab, which by the way, doesn't make it bad either. So, oh, it's not natural. But what is the mechanism behind how it's going to increase LPA? Please explain this to me. How is that happening? You can't because it doesn't and you're just trying to push your narrative. You know, I really tire of these naturalistic fallacy arguments where it's like, well, this isn't, this isn't what's natural for you. As you film it on a smartphone, on a podcast, being transmitted on the internet all around the world, I just, the lack of critical thinking is actually just nuts. Y yeah, it is not the natural form of what you'd find out in nature. But again, that doesn't make something necessarily bad. And there is no evidence to support what she's saying. And just say, oh, I've seen people get off protein powder and this improved. Uh, let's see their blood work. And you're telling me that protein powder is the only thing they took out of the diet? Like of, of all the things. No, no, no. It's not the fact that they eat like shit. It's not the fact that they don't exercise. It's not the fact that they drink too much, don't get enough sleep. No, no, no. It's not the fact that they're stressed out of their minds. No, 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 no. It's the protein powder. Like, just off.